She told me before, but well, I was on my camera and didn't look for it. Super. I always use music when I edit my videos and that actually makes it quite easy for me because I'm used to that. But recently Epidemic Sound launched a challenge to edit a short video only using their sound effects instead of music. And if there's one thing that I've learned from my big mentor, Barney Stinson, it is... Challenge accept, wait for it. Ted. You saw the result already, so let's talk about the experience and what I've learned from it. Crashed the drone, of course. Luckily, I found it. It's in the tree and not in the small lake. So much luck today. <laughs> Yeah, the past few weeks here in Europe haven't been much different than in Asia actually. Traveled around a lot, filmed a lot of stuff and crashed drones, like, you know, the usual stuff that happens on the road. But let's talk about the first thing that I've learned sound designing a video without music and that has to be that I recognize that there's a lot more that I can do during my sound design process because if you edit a video to the music first, then it already feels kind of right. Like you cut on the beat, so when you have jump cuts, etc. in there or other transitions that usually feels right already and also the music gives it a feeling so you have this underlying layer already that's important to convey the feeling of each shot but if you turn the music off it always feels like there's something missing and you want to make it better and better and better and that is where you end up inserting more and more sound effects and I found that particularly difficult with drone shots because if you're high up in the air you don't necessarily see everything that you could use to insert sound effects to and then you you really have to imagine what could happen down there and come up with sound effect ideas and yeah that, that shows me that in the future after editing to the music I would just turn the music off and then really take some time to come up with better sound effects and of course it will take a lot more time so you should only do that if you have the time if you have maybe five additional hours or so for your sound design but I would argue that if you do it like that you will get better results and to give you a bit of behind the scenes footage that is the PGY Tech Mantis pod. I didn't bring my tripod, what was a mistake. Tripod is always better, but as you can see with this mini tripod, you can make it work. And my second learning is that you just have to start as quick as possible because when you're just sitting there, you see some of the footage, then you don't necessarily directly have an idea on what sound effects to insert. And what helped me a lot was to start with the ambient sound because it doesn't matter what shot you have, even if it's a drone shot that's far away from everything, you can kind of imagine what kind of ambient sound you want to have in there. Is it wind? Is it trees? Is it birds? Is it maybe some city noise or whatever? Like that's always a good starting point because that directly comes into your head. And the moment you have the ambient sound in there, that is also where new ideas pop up in your head, what you could insert there. But there are sometimes these clips where you just don't see anything that could cause a sound effect. And these are the clips that I found the most difficult to sound design because there you really have to think how you can make them work. Because if you don't insert anything, it also feels a bit wrong, like something is missing there. And what helps there is to watch some clips that come before or after that one, because then you get ideas of things that you could also put at least a bit quieter in the clip that you're currently sound designing. And what I would also recommend you is to build a local sound library. Like right now I was dow downloading all the sound effects directly from Epidemic Sound because I only want to use sound effects from this platform. But if you have a local sound library where you already know lots of sound effects that you have in there, that helps you a lot to speed things up and also to get ideas sometimes because obviously if you already have certain sound effects in mind that you could use for a certain clips then you just drag them in your timeline and you see directly if they work so definitely build a local folder where you save all your sound effects and don't worry about the subscription after downloading the sound effects for one time you don't have to download them again for every single video you can just leave them on your hard drive and you can use them as much as you want as long as you're still subscribed to epidemic sound Always waiting for mom and dad. But even without mom and dad, it's good hope. The landscape here is so nice. Sometimes there's deer running around in the morning and evening, but I couldn't film it yet. They are just too fast. 
but it's so nice to get fog all the time and so on. Even the evening, I never experienced it in warm countries. That's actually quite cool. Jump cuts. That's also something that I found super complicated during the sound design process because if you have jump cuts when you have music, you always add it on the beat there and it automatically feels right. But if you don't have the beats, then there's something missing and it oftentimes feels off. And what helped me a lot there, I figured out were J and L cuts. So basically you start the audio from the next clip already on the clip before, or you do the opposite, you extend the audio from the first clip to the second one or the next one at least. And that kind of hides the transition a little bit because the viewer already hears what will happen soon and then he sees it. And that makes a hell of a difference because then suddenly it feels right. But there were also two other types of transitions. At first, this glow transition where the sun becomes brighter and there I used a riser effect. These sharp risers, they just feel right with those sun effects and there I used it for a transition, but I also used that sometimes in my videos for generally when the sun pops up somewhere, just always fits. And also for the zoom transition, I used a simple whoosh sound effect, a bit longer and bassy, because the problem with whoosh sound effects is that you can't just insert a random one. You really have to try a few ones until you find one that really fits the transition or whatever you want to use the whoosh sound effect for. So if you use the wrong one, it just feels off. So really listen to a few ones there and you find the right one. And yeah, that's about transitions. You definitely should use sound effects also to enhance them because Otherwise, a transition just feels off as well if you don't enhance that via sound. And here's another learning that I kind of knew before, but this challenge teached me to do it even better. And that is that it's not just about inserting sound effects, but also what you do with them. For example, what I did a lot in this particular video was to use the stereo sound effects from DaVinci Resolve to really adjust the audio to where the sound should come from in the scene. So let's say, for example, you have something going on on the right side and your sound effect is recorded on on the left side then it feels off obviously you see something happening on the right but the sound effect is coming from the left if, especially if you wear headphones then it's really obvious and in that case you have to use the stereo tools where you can move that sound over to the right side really good example is that hyperlapse there up the mountain there you have different rocks or so appearing in the shot and at first there's a big rock to the right and then there are a few smaller rocks to the left and what I did there was was that I keyframed the stereo effect. So I first moved it to the right, the audio, and then I keyframed it a bit more to the left because there was still a bit of mountain on the right. So I wanted to have a bit of that sound on the right side, but I also wanted to have more sounds on the left. And the original sound effect was like kind of in the middle, a bit left leaning, and it was long. It was not just one simple whoosh, it was like So by keyframing that, I was able to move that from the right to the left and sounding re really realistic. And as mentioned, I kind of knew that before already and I did that already when I edited with music, but I didn't do it that much. Like now where the music was missing, I was really focusing a lot more on that. And I also noticed a new tool that I did not know before in DaVinci Resolve, that is the stereo width, where you can define the angle of where the audio is coming from. Like usually when you have a sound effect, it feels like all around you or in a certain direction, but there you can really adjust that it's only in front of you and not I don't just mean panning I just really mean the angle of the audio there and I found that super interesting because especially if I had this former buildings there from from the Dolomites there then I often oftentimes used that to really make these sound effects sound like coming from that building instead of somewhere else so think about all this stuff the directions where it's coming from and how far it is away sometimes also the pitch can make a huge difference just by slightly changing it a little bit it can sound better so it's not just about what sound effects you insert or that you insert sound effects but also what you do with them afterwards yeah Ronja how can you go here huh why is Pascal here huh and dogs don't understand <laughs> why they can't go out. Let's talk about the last learning, which is that sound design is actually a really powerful storytelling tool. They actually never really saw it like that, but if you 
think about it, sound design means that you can give the viewer information that he just can't get by only watching the video itself. And I found that so helpful. For example, on the hiking shots there, they inserted some breathing sound effects and that conveys that I'm a bit out of breath, obviously, that it's a hard hike. Otherwise, you would just see me walking around smiling, but just by inserting the sound effect, it completely changes the storytelling of this shot. So also think about that. How can you use sounds to tell a better story with your videos? This is really one of the most powerful tools especially if you do a bit of like kind of documentary stuff or so where it's not just about a fancy edit to your music but maybe even a vlog or so when you want to give some additional information about a certain scene you might be able to do that with sound effects but of course to do all of that you need a lot of sound effects and at first what you can do there are a lot of sound effects included both in DaVinci Resolve when you download the sound effects library and also in Final Cut so come both come for free but but they're usually not enough. You usually you need more sound effects than that. And this is where I can only say again that Epidemic Sound really surprised me with their sound library. And especially because it's included with a standard subscription, which is only $9 per month. Plus you get another 30 days off if you subscribe to their service with the link in the description below. So there you can test it completely risk-free, but again, like $9 per month. I don't even know how they do it. So definitely sign up to their service there you get lots of music and all of those sound effects and aside from that I edited this video in DaVinci Resolve and actually tried out the music page there a lot where you can mix all your sound effects in and so on it was really good but you usually use DaVinci Resolve for color grading mainly and I did another video about that recently that you find here in the corner so check that out as well if you want to make your videos better and if you like this video please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing hope to see you in the next one